Yak Gadget, made in America, based outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track monitored accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of the hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the153anglers.com to place your order today. This segment is brought to you by Jig Masters. Step up your game with high quality performance jigs, spinner baits, buzz baits, and more from JigMasters.com. And always, when in doubt, get the jig out. You're listening to Bass Fishing for News on the Paddle and Fan Podcast with your hosts, Ryan Milford and Sean Lambert. Welcome back to Bass Fishing for Noobs on the Pal and Finn Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. Got the co-host, Sean. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. I'm excited for today's episode. I am, too. I was looking forward to this all week, so. I, I was, too, because, you know, today, uh, the air date for this is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Hope everybody's had a fun weekend. You know, got to have, you know, time on the water, you know, good grilling out or barbecue have a barbecue north. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah um one of the things about memorial day it's like the reason we celebrate this is to like remember the people that you know gave the ultimate price for our freedom and uh and so i something else is okay i'm getting a little twisted here <laughs> all right so the veterans that do make it back and all that you know they, there's a very high suicide rate with them and you know they could use as much help as they can get and today we have some people on from an organization that kind of helps pe- helps veterans work through their problems or you know just get them out on the water let them reset and all that cool stuff we have Miss Amber Helms and Joe Winston from Heroes on the Water. Welcome to the show, y'all. Thank Thanks you. For I, us. I, I hope I hope I summed that up at least decent. I feel like I butchered it completely. <laughs> but uh yeah, if I'm y'all sure you guys want... can speak a lot more eloquently than we can about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, if y'all want just introduce yourselves real quick and what y'all do and all that good stuff. Uh uh, ladies from? first. Yeah. Am- Amber, you want to go first? <laughs> All right. Thank you. My name is Amber Helms. I currently live um, right outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I'm the executive director of Heroes on the Water. Um, my husband, it, Rusty, is a 20-year veteran, Army veteran, who retired in 2008. Um, got into kayak fishing a little bit after that, and I realized really quick that his demeanor and his mood um, was improved after he would come out off the water from a day of kayak fishing. And so we looked into Heroes on the Water and started at a volunteer level at the chapter here in Northeast Oklahoma. And um, I'm very passionate and I believe in it 150%. It makes a difference. Awesome. And Joe, how about you? Uh, Joe Winston. I'm the director of operations and I have been involved as a volunteer since the inception. Uh, Our good friend Jim Dolan asked for a show of hands of some guys that were willing to go to San Antonio and uh, grab an extra kayak and take some folks out. And I thought, holy cow, that's a great idea. And uh, I didn't know at the time that 14 years later I would be helping uh, steer the organization towards uh, success and we're sitting at 57 chapters across 28 states right now and uh, anybody that's listening that's interested uh, we'd sure like to talk to you about opening a chapter awesome um i I was going to mention jim's name uh i had uh was very fortunate to meet him uh at one of the local events here uh 
in in, in PA uh, just a couple of months before um, his unfortunate passing, and uh, I was very uh, you know grateful for that t- the brief amount of time that I got to spend with him because he was a very special person. You could tell just I met him one time, and I could tell you know the kind of you know passion he had for this, and it was just amazing. So his uh, heart was. The only thing bigger than him was his heart and his passion to serve his fellow veterans. And uh, I did not serve. I come from a long line of service. And uh, when an opportunity came up to serve at home, I just jumped at the opportunity and, and was taken in. And I think one of the great things about getting to be a civilian in a veteran and first responder service organization is introducing other civilians to our cause and our mission and it, uh, it it's amazing to to be able to share the community across kayak fishing jim used to say that all we were trying to do was bring these guys you know bring them back alive and we'll get them back to life on the kayak and teach them what you guys i love the concept of y'all's podcast there's no pretenses here this is for the noobs so uh again thanks for having us yeah, no problem. So um, I, I just to speak a little bit about um, what you guys do. So for the folks that aren't uh, as familiar with uh, Heroes on the Water, um, just kind of break down what the chapters do, the kind of events that they have and uh, that kind of thing. Whoever Jim, wants to. You want to handle that one? <laughs> I think you're perfect for that. One. Okay. All right. So Cut. the chapters, the chapters um, host free of charge events um, in the in the local area, and veterans, first responders, and their family members are encouraged and welcome to attend. And then, of course, we always need volunteers to to run it, especially volunteers who are. Uh, experienced in kayaks and fishing because that ends up being our um, on the water guide on the water help. Um, Normally you show up, you get through the safety briefing, you get your PFD on, you get some bait, you get some snacks, you get in the kayak and you guys see what you can find. And normally if somebody, if you're brand new and you don't know what you're doing, they're, they're right there with you to help you along the way, answer your questions, help you if you get tangled or you need to rehook or whatever. And then depending upon the chapters now, COVID has kind of put a little bit of a kink in everything, but um, we, we used to always try to have a meal had some type of something, hamburgers, hot dogs, um, so it depends upon whatever is locally um, allowed nowadays and uh, try to do it once a month um, in, in during season. Um, you know, South Texas is able to go year round. Pennsylvania, you're probably not. <laughs> um, not so much. No, nope. no. So <laughs> that that's pretty much it. It's simple. Put you in a kayak get you on the water, get you out there in nature and let all of that melt all the stress away. And I, I can personally speak to that too. I mean, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh yeah, it, it, it sounds really cool. And um, the first event I went to, I was like hooked instantly. I'm like, this is amazing. Just seeing the response and the way people, they'll go out on the water, maybe a little hesitant about you mm-hmm. know being out on a kayak, especially if it's their first time or anything but they come back with like a huge smile on their face and, you know, when can I do this again? This is amazing. And, and just seeing them spend time with their, their family, their friends, you know, especially now, I think it's more important than ever because of um, the isolation that kind of came from COVID times is it's hard on everybody, but it's especially harder, harder on those people who, you know, need that kind of support. And, you know, so I think this year more than anything, it's going to make that much more of a difference just being able to, you know, get people back together. Um, you know, they always say, you know, remember to check on your friends. And, and I think that's something that's going to be super beneficial, if, you know, always, but especially this year. Absolutely. We're so excited to be able to get back in the water and back having events. Um, 2021 is going to be a great year. We just had our first event here in uh, in PA, um, and it was uh, great to uh, 
have everybody get back together. I was not able to attend that event. I was fishing in a tournament that day, unfor- and I was like, ah, oh, of all days, uh, it has to be that day. But uh, I plan to be on at the rest of the ones we have here. And I think we have at least uh, like four more scheduled for the rest of the season. That'll take us kind of through the mm-hmm. warm weather. So I'm super excited about that. And awesome. That's, that's kind of interesting to me. Like, I guess I didn't know enough about the organization. I thought it was more of like they just kind of connect somebody who has the kayaks and is experienced with a veteran, and they kind of organize a time and place to go and and do that. I didn't realize there were like big events that people were all going to. That's that's really cool. Well, our our events. We call them outings internally. I don't know if that verbiage matters because we never really put a, we don't say you have to have a certain number of people. When you take one or two folks or one person out, that's changing a life. And so as an organization, we have encouraged regular participation with our volunteers and community outreach. So yes, you know, you're going to have 10 or 15 people on a Saturday, a few times a year, getting together, doing this. And we're casting a wide net, trying to get as many people from the community to come out, support. But then there's also the person that, you know, for work or whatever reason, can't attend a 10 or 12 person event. But we really want them to reach out to our local volunteers as well and say, hey, is anybody around on a Tuesday? You know, let's go fish. So, um, yes, the putting our volunteers in service in the communities, actively actively reaching out to, you know, various other groups online. I see lots of our chapters reaching out on podcast, uh, Facebook pages and stuff like that, you know, where they're saying, hey, we're having this and y'all come on out. So we're we are trying to raise awareness not only for our mission but for the cause of all people to help those that have helped us definitely makes a a big deal and and i think it's a great opportunity for anybody looking to serve and you know even if like the reason i kind of got into it was i was kind of networking at the time you know trying to meet as many folks that kayak fished as possible because I figured the best way to learn is sure. to learn from the people who did it. And it just happened that a lot of the people in my local area also were here as on the water volunteers. So that's kind of what drew me in. But then as soon as I went, did it and I was hooked by just by the, like I said, by the experience. So um, if anybody's on the fence about trying it, uh, if you're nervous at all, there's so many ways you can help and there's so many different things you can do with the, the events. Um, the first event I went to, I was just basically the guy loading people in, in, in kayaks. And I was like, you know, here you go. This is how the paddle goes. Keep your head between the rails, that kind of thing. I'll go. And this guy's going to lead you. So I just did that all day long, but just that, I liked that part because I got to see them coming and going and see the difference between, you know, how they went out on the water and how they came back. So, and that's, you know, for anybody that has a friend that might be listening to this, um, you don't have to be a kayak fisher person to to join us. You know, there's some light lifting, I would call it. It's usually done in teams and um, some chairs to set up so that, you know, like Amber mentioned, we usually do meals. Uh, I believe that breaking bread together is an important part of sealing the camaraderie that's established. You go out on a mission, you catch a fish, you didn't catch a fish, you come back in. You talk about the experience sitting around over a light meal and, you know, a cold water and Coke or something. And it, it makes a difference when you connect with those folks and you look forward to the next time y'all all are together. So um, it's it's a neat it's a neat program and it works and adapts all over the country. I had someone reach out to me from Alaska and I'm thinking, I'm way down here in Texas. I didn't tell you all that. <laughs> I'm on the Texas, Louisiana Gulf Coast. All right. Uh, about as far and from Alaska as you can get. And so I'm not that familiar with Alaska. But someone reaching out from Alaska, the one who start of uh, Heroes on the Water community, uh, uh, Heroes on the Water chapter serving their community is, it's really neat. 
it's just amazing. So uh, we'll maybe next time we talk, we'll have a chapter in Alaska. We'll all be on a plane to go up there and do some <laughs> kayak fishing in Alaska. Does that not sound cool? You know, sign me, so, sign me up, man. I'm there. It, yeah, and if you're in Alaska listening to this by chance, reach out info at heroes on the water dot org. Uh, it'll land at my desk and I'll put you together with some uh, volunteers that are interested in getting the chapter started. I was just going to ask about that. What, what's the best way if someone uh, a to either find a chapter near them if they're looking to help or want to attend an event or B, they they can't seem to find a chapter. They just reach out to that info or that info at Heroes on the Water, and that'll get them on the right path. It, it will. Um, we all get a chance to have that distributed to us. So if you've got, you know, an awesome donation and you want to partner, it'll wind up at Amber's desk. If you're looking for volunteers, it winds up at the volunteers desk in that particular community. So um, if you want to start a chapter, it comes to me. I'm the guy that starts chapters. So um, I look forward to expanding the mission in your community. If, uh, if you're looking to see if there's a chapter in your area, you can go straight to our website, which is heroesonthewater.org. And you can click on the link that's chapters and events, and it pops up a little map. And we keep that regularly updated. You'll see all of our chapters across the nation. And you can click on those icons and it'll take you to uh, a portal to get in touch with that particular chapter through their Facebook page. Awesome. And, and I go ahead, Ryan. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, uh, if you're like, I know a lot of the paddle shops in our area also are big supporters. They're the ones who kind of let us use kayaks. Um, exactly. You know, and so if you're a, a, a paddle sports dealer or a, a, like somebody who has access to a bunch of kayaks, you know, also feel free to, you know, look into that because it's, I think it's, it's a great um, uh, way to spread your, like kind of almost like spread the word about your business, but also help the community and reach out because that kind of help I think is super needed too. I, uh, the places by me, um, the couple paddle sports dealers by me are, are amazing, you know, I, we've had huge events and then, like you said, smaller events, but they're always there to help. And uh, there's, I mean, some of those bigger events, we've had, you know, 30 kayaks all going out and there's still people waiting to, you know, for them to come back in so they can have their turn. So um, it's, it's really amazing to see um, all the different aspects of help that come in, you know. Yeah, we love the local shops. Uh, the cha they are instrumental in the chapters and the community outreach. So absolutely. I think of uh, the kayak shops in our region, kind of like bars for fishing junkies, you know, <laughs> it, okay. it, you, you got to kind of hang around the shop to get the secrets and uh, get to know the community. And uh, I think that's one of the great things about the, partnerships we have and i don't in beaumont actually have a kayak shop right now um my closest one is over in lake charles and uh i don't get to go hang out over there but uh the trade-off is i'm 10 minutes from the boat ramp, so <laughs> what do you do you know yeah i, I feel you I, uh we talked a little bit before uh this and i told you i'm about 40 miles south of nashville well my closest shop is in nashville so I, I don't get to hang out. You know, we used to have one a little bit closer, but it shut down last year. Um, but, but yeah, and we were actually talking, you know, I know there's a lot of people in the local area that listen to this show. There's actually one getting started up in Nashville. There is. Uh, a we're, chapter. Uh, we're getting right. the Music City chapter started back again. And those guys i would like to point out especially if there's nashville listeners right now today on memorial day they have a uh, funding page set up to help kick start their chapter we're doing a partnership with carry the load if you don't know about carry the load you need to check it out they are bringing back the meaning of memorial day they have a, a relay several relays across the nation where they converge in Dallas, which happens to be our HQ, and uh, they have a 
an event in downtown Dallas at a park where all the three, is it three or four relays? Three. three. And they converge in Dallas. And so all those gentlemen have walked to bring the meaning back to Memorial Day and the Music City chapter jumped in and did a fundraiser. So go check out the Music City chapter, check out carrytheload.org and you can donate directly to the Nashville chapter through that fundraising campaign. And uh, there's some matching funds there maybe, um, not certain about that, that was, uh, but they get, to, they get to participate in a national level fundraiser and all the money goes to them locally at the Nashville Music City chapter, so. Yeah, I think I think that's awesome. We're getting a chapter here, and I'm really surprised we didn't already have one. Did you say that it used to be one? Or? There was one, and um, the gentleman actually went to go serve again. Okay. And um, we are a volunteer based organization, and so when our volunteers have to go back to work or transition, we need other volunteers to step up, and we just didn't have. A, the right team in place there but now we do and we're super excited they're a uh, chapter that's led by uh, first responders mostly law enforcement so we're super excited to have a music city chapter that uh, not only is serving veterans but also reaching out to the first responder community as well and their families and uh, the they're just they're coming out of the gate strong you you Tennesseans are, are good people. I'll say it's that. It's the volunteer state. It's, the volunteer it state. is the volunteer state. <laughs> wow, and, there you and go. As a, as a Texan, and I, I don't know, I'm sixth or seventh generation now, maybe. I don't know. Um, we owe everything to the Tennessee volunteers. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. I actually, when we were trying to set up this interview here, um, you know, my daughter had a friend stay the night. And her dad came to pick him up. And it was actually my first time ever meeting him. And he, he's a veteran, like early, he's in his early 40s, I think. And, uh, you know, seemed like a real stand up dude. And we started talking about kayak fishing because he does a little bit of kayak fishing and all that. And I actually mentioned to him, like, what we we're planning on doing and, uh, like, talking to him with y'all and mentioned heroes on the water and, you know, kind of what y'all did and stuff. And, like, he thought that was a really cool idea because I believe he, volunteers uh somewhere locally like i, I guess kind of like just meetings like to kind of talk about how like vet for veterans just kind of talk about peer, how they feel or something mm -hmm. and, we call it peer-to-peer -peer support okay yeah so he yeah. kind of volunteers to do that to help with i guess people that are freshly out of the service to you know help with them and all that and you know he thought it was a really cool idea so you know i might even talk to him see if i can get him on board with this but but yeah I, i'm really excited for that and you know i know there's a lot of kayakers here in the nashville area so you know i better see y'all signing up to volunteer <laughs> there you go awesome <laughs> you, you gotta make our, our state proud for for its motto okay hey and um you know tennessee's not as big as uh texas but there's room for lots of chapters over there in Tennessee. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's how far, how, how it's long? It's a very it long drive? state. It's a very yeah. long state. <laughs> I mean, east to west, how long? I mean, it's how many miles, you know? I don't know if y'all want to continue this conversation and <laughs> no, give me just a I minute. I can pull this up. I can pull no, up. don't know Googling aloud now. Come on, you know. But I just want to. I just want to tell anybody that's listening that uh, there's always room for another Heroes on the Water chapter in your community. It just right, is. and I was thinking about that too. Um, even if you you have a smaller chapter. Um, we do a lot of combined events here in PA, too, where we'll get together with some Maryland folks from the Maryland chapter, and it just allows us to do bigger and, and better events. And so there's a lot of joining like that, too. So even if you're thinking, oh, well, my chapter is small, um, you still can do, I mean, you could do amazing things. Like you said, if you help one person, you've made a difference. But if you band together with another chapter and do events that way, you can, you know, triple, you know, the kind of impact that you can have. So. Um, just uh, wanted to throw that out there too, because 
Um, those are some of the best events that I've been to is when we combine with the, uh, the Maryland folks that are, you know, right across the border from us and, and do an event together. Uh, it, a, it lets me fish in Maryland. And uh, so I, I like that because uh, I don't always get that opportunity. But uh, it, uh, it's it been, it, like I said, it, it makes the events that much better when you have multiple chapters come together, um, join their efforts together and just, you know, be able to help a ton of people. It's it okay. is. It's about 500 things, miles. 500. All right. Five, <laughs> let's see. Um, 90 miles. Now I got to do some math. I can't well, remember. there's a lot of chapters that can happen. Uh, that's that a lot of potential miles. in Tennessee. Well, so exactly. um, step up. I'm, I'm ready to see some of those volunteers step <laughs> up. Exactly. Uh, you know, what, what Sean was talking about, though, reminded me uh, about that collaboration in the Northeast region. Um, speaking of the different chapters in Maryland, We've got a new program at Fort Belvoir in Virginia. Um, we really got a lot of opportunities right there in y'all's neck of the woods. And, and last year, uh, we're coming up on our second annual Jim Dolan Memorial Tournament. Tournament, so yeah. Catch, catch photo release on iAngler. Um, the Northeast Saltwater and Freshwater Division, we have one of each, really brought it last year. I mean... I did not realize how strong you guys feel about catch photo and release tournaments. <laughs> um, and, and again, you've got an opportunity there to donate, not only enter the tournament, but mm -hmm. donate directly to the chapters, buy funky raffle items. We've got some amazing sponsors uh, already lined up that we're not talking about. Um, we, we, yeah, you got to have a buzz, right? So, <laughs> but last year, we had a great turnout for our first year, and we've got some some new tricks up our sleeve this year, and we're really looking forward to bringing it. And uh, I hope that this becomes a real wonder, a real tribute to Jim as a national mm -hmm. tournament with people all across, whether you've got a how chapter or not in your neighborhood, if you're out, it's open to all waters, salt, fresh. And we have divisions in salt and fresh everywhere except the Midwest. If y'all can tell me if, if you're in Kansas or <laughs> Iowa, Ohio, and you, you've got some salt water up there, I will <laughs> let you enter the salt water division. But to our knowledge, the Midwest is straight fresh water. And, um, there was some concern about maybe people moving in between um, regions. If you're northeast and you go south, you know, sandbagging, catching bigger fish in the south. Uh, that uh, I Angler app's got a pretty sneaky way of figuring out if you were in your region or not. I can't <laughs> disclose that either, but. <laughs> yeah, September so, 11th through October 10th will be the tournament. It's a 30 day tournament. So. I did take Thanks part in that me. last year as well. And yes, mm -hmm. it, it was a ton of fun. Um, the, like you said, the raffle prizes were amazing. Um, you can even, you can, you don't even have to fish. You can just go donate mm -hmm. and, and get chances to win the raffle prizes too. Um, and yeah, there's tons of amazing swag, you know, the heroes in the water shirts. Um, the, the, we, we've got a fresh edition of the Jim Dolan Memorial live in the dream t-shirt too. And that'll be, but one of the things we heard from everybody that participated last year is they wanted to wear their shirt during the tournament. So this year, the pre-registration will include a cutoff time so that your t tournament t-shirts are shipped to the participants in time to wear them during the t month long tournament. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I like this shirt Sean's got on. Sean, can I borrow that? Yeah, uh, sure. As long as you don't <laughs> give it away, you know. Well, I'm it, partial it, to it. It's probably not going to fit you after I put it. I'm about a hundred pounds heavier. So. <laughs> hey, Ryan, um, you let me know. I, I got a shirt for you, boss. You take. Send me your size. Two X. <laughs> See, they're 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 actually matching. Did you notice That's that? That's right. Amber and Sean are in. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say Amber's yeah. got hers on too. Yeah. Yep. So. Now is that like two. the kind of like the sun shirts, like the thin? Yes, it is. Yeah. Performance yep. material, yes. Yep. yep, but they have a whole bunch. They have 
t-shirts. They have um, regular long sleeve shirts. They have hats. Um, I think I just ordered a kayak flag because I lost my flag off the back of my kayak, the one that mm. I put on when I drive. So that's coming in the mail. I haven't got it yet, but uh, I think yeah. I, I think so. The flags were sent to me as opposed to sent to the right person, the other person who <laughs> mails stuff. So you're getting it from me, Sean. It should be arriving this week. Sweet. Um, uh, our executive director yeah. and procurement department. Exactly. You know. <laughs> many hats, many hats, that's right? That's right. If you need a flag? <laughs> let me know. I'll, yeah, I'll, that's all. Yep. Now. Uh, can people get on like the website or something if they wanted to order that kind of stuff? Is that where they order? It if from? you go to heroesonthewater.org, right at the top right hand corner, you get a, a little button that says shop or donate or both. You know. Awesome. So yeah. yeah and there's also a place on there for volunteers, right? If I remember correctly. We do, yeah. If you want to get involved, there's a drop down menu and um, again it, it lands at the appropriate person's desk and it gets sent to the local volunteers and um, then you get a chance to go out get on the, the mailing list you know volunteers in different chapters do it a little differently some are real heavy on facebook some are email distribution lists so uh, you just contact your local people and we help you get in contact with them in case one of those not heads out there isn't answering the phone you know <laughs> We'll take yeah, care of you. Reach out to it's, us. I think it's the contact us button on the website. That'll okay. get you. We'll get you set up. Okay. Awesome. I was going to mention that, you know, my, my our local group is very uh, uh, into Facebook. So that's actually how I first heard about ours, uh, as I just happened to see it on Facebook. Um, so if you, if you have a local chapter, you can check on Facebook and see if they have a, a page. Because uh, we that's where they post a lot of our events and stuff, and um, that's kind of how I keep track of our local stuff. But uh, obviously, different chapters do it different ways, I'm sure. So, some people are very anti Facebook. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, Especially after in, this in, past year, it seems like everybody disappeared and went to parlor or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, uh, you know, I look at it like channels. You know, our goal at the end of the day is to find that person who is at home having a hard time. And I don't care what channel it is. Uh, tin can, string, Morse code. Um, you know, we just we want to reach out and find those people in our community that uh, need the camaraderie and an opportunity to go out. You know, it's amazing just to be around other people that are like minded about fishing and you know appreciate what we're doing so now i'm i'm curious I, I if y'all don't mind sharing a little bit of it like i'm curious like feedback that y'all gotten from veterans that have attended your events like like in ways that it's helped them and stuff like that yep they uh they come back that's the biggest thing it don't you think amber I mean, when they get off the water, they're usually talking a 90 mile a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you think, well, that was a peaceful experience, but they're very excited to share. And then they'll follow up with, you know, how it helped or thank us. And then when's the next time? And as they come back, and that's one of the things about our program, but it's part of that community, the building of we're not a one and done. Um, it's not a exotic trip to Costa Rica on an offshore fishing trip, bucket list kind of stuff. We're, we might be fishing the urban pond in, you know, Topeka somewhere. It's, it, but it's, it's about an introduction to our sport an introduction to our culture and lifestyle. And, um, kayak fishermen have, a perfect camaraderie already built in that just lends itself to welcoming new people and veterans and first responders that may be having trouble integrating with other folks. You know, if you got a fishing buddy, you don't have problems. 
I, I was going to brag on on our sport a little bit too. I, I you know, I, I was thinking the oh, same thing. You know, when I first got into kayak fishing, I was very intimidated. I didn't want to be the noob. You know, I, I thought, you know, if I go up to this, now guy, he's say, embraced being the noob. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence, where you know, you know, never would have thought I'd end up here. But you know, at that time, there there was definitely a time where I was like, I don't want to be that guy that's like. Hey, can I go fishing with you? No, you know, I don't want you to feel like I'm stealing your spots or anything. I, uh, I just want to learn and, and I, I, I want to, you know, meet people. And, and I was embraced by the kayak angling community and, you know, that, that feeling of friendship and camaraderie, like you said, it's, it is ingrained into our, our community. I think that's one of the things that makes our sport special. And like you said, it lines up perfectly with, with this kind of organization because it, it, that is the main thing is, is getting out there, being together, sharing stories, you know, making friends and, you know, just living life, you know, experiencing life again, getting out there and doing it. And I, I think it's like a match made in heaven. I thought about something while you're talking. Uh, sorry, Amber. Um, you do have one problem if you've got a fishing boat. If he caught more fish than you do, or she, in, in in Amber's case especially, she outfishes Rusty. I do, I do. That's nice. I give him a run for his money. <laughs> See, I so. don't think I don't think that's as much of an issue as it is if they tell you or if they go telling people where you caught the fish. You know, <laughs> if you outfish me, fine, but don't tell people where, like my spots, okay? Mm -mm. You know. <laughs> What do you, you know with fish it, for, or, or what you guys? Uh, I'm sure you don't get to fish as much as much as you would like uh, running the events, but uh, those kind of things. But um, hopefully, you guys do get a chance to experience that as well. I'm hoping. Well, I'm in Oklahoma, so I'm I'm really good at, at catching perch, <laughs> <laughs> crappie, bass if I'm lucky, um, catfish if I'm not wanting to catch them i'll get that <laughs> joe gets to catch all the fun stuff there oh but, i'm sure um, yeah i uh, i don't know if it's fun but well hell yeah it's fun of course it is. <laughs> um i primarily chase redfish okay. and i am it's the best way to describe our fishery we're we're a very shallow water, almost brackish bay system. Right now, the rivers and creeks that feed this bay system are turning it all to fresh water, and the sea trout and the redfish and the sheep's head are all about fifty foot of water offshore, frolicking out of kayak distance. You know, <laughs> um, but in you know. Without floods, they get back into the bays, estuaries, very shallow. I like to describe it um, more of like stalking, side casting, chasing. Um, don't bring your pedal boat down here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I mean, you can. A lot of people do. But um, and it just turns out to be you're pushing a PA-14 around on mud flats. <laughs> I was a pity Go. Paul's not on here because uh, I personally <laughs> heard his stories about dragging up PA 14 many places mm. where it's not very mm -hmm. easy to get it. <laughs> to 200 miles to my south, you get into the coastal bend. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the most beautiful grass flats. They're like three and a half foot deep for miles and miles. And the water's beautiful. You can, you can pedal all you want. But here it's oyster shell and scraping through. 18 to 20 inches of water to be very very quiet and see that redfish right there and, and make one good cast and and it might be an hour's worth of work to make a cast at a couple of three fish and uh, changing gear bells and whistles on your kayaks depth finders don't work much either when they're covered in mud so <laughs> see, we, we need to give your name to dustin nichols and yep, I let him get that. you on his segment. He does the saltwater segment here on Paddle and Finn. 
and he's down in go. Texas. Uh, I can't remember exactly where he lives, but he fishes for redfish and stuff all the time. I'm not sure if you know. Well, we right. have, uh, well, we have 739 miles of coastline. Yeah, I was. Get, I know it's a big place, cause, so I, <laughs> I wasn't assuming y'all knew each other just because you both red. And I'm way over here. Well, it's reversed here. I'm on the just. My father used to say they should have given it back to the Cajuns. I'm so far in <laughs> to Louisiana, Texas, but uh, yeah, we've got some amazing fisheries in, in down south where our Rio Grande Valley chapter is. That's uh, the lower Laguna Madre. It's the only hypersalinic bay in North America. And uh, they grow giant sea trout up there. At PA, y'all call them weak fish. Yep. Um, but down here, and I think they're, they, I don't know that they're the exact species. They might be a subspecies. Um, but uh, they get big. They get very, very big in South Texas. And it's, it's super neat to chase them. Um, so, but, what, yeah. What kind, of, I, what kind of kayak are you in? Uh, Go ahead, Joe. Tell them what kind of kayak you're in. Are you guys ready for this? Sure. Is it going to be like a sun dolphin? Like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> it's a Punga 140. You know I actually have heard of that. Yeah, you have. I've never. Heard of it. <laughs> I, ha I have heard of a pun guy. I forget. I'm trying to think of who I heard it from, but I have I've heard that name before. So I can't How remember when. Uh, it's 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 a oh, let's see, that one is my third one, and it stuck with me. I think it's a 06 model. Wow. Yeah. Is it a kayak? It's like <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's got a piece of fiberglass patch in the bottom of the hole about that. But, <laughs> I was just gonna yeah. ask about that. Um and, uh, sure, oysters are hard, but I mean it's it's had a it's had a fiberglass patch on it since it was a baby. Now it's an old man, you know. <laughs> but uh yeah, I um again shallow water, windy navigation and efficiency is uh the way I learned to kayak. I I initially learned to whitewater kayak and we kept two piece fly rods squeezed in with the float bags and then <laughs> you'd stop. <laughs> yeah. You you'd stop, eddy out, you know, get out of your kayak, wade, and then you'd run another set of rapids and get in the pool behind it, fish the tailwaters and, and hopscotch down the rivers in the northern Rockies. And uh that's all. Awesome. It never occurred to me until, golly, I started kayak fishing together um, about 2000, right there, 99, 2000. So that's crazy. So you're like an OG kayak. He fisher, is right? OG. Mm -hmm. <sighs> stubborn. I don't know if OG means anything, <laughs> just stubborn. Um, and, and although the Pungo 140 is my story boat, you know, and a lot of the guys that I fished with, the, over the years that have come to Texas from Heroes in the Water, I always get that out. But uh, my my latest favorite uh, is a Diablo Paddle Sports. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but I think it's, I've heard that. But I'm just I'm taken with this because as a fly fisherman, it is the cleanest deck. There is no frills. There's no place to mount a gear track to it. It has this beautiful marine mat kit that comes with it and a nice, comfortable, they call them Larry chairs. And um, you can you can literally hang tin off the nose of that boat. It's that stable. <laughs> nice. Um, they pack them up in, in West Texas. They put three Yeti 35s on that thing for a week, and they go 200 miles down the Devil's River. Um, wow. Speaking of hot spot, boy, I've... Forget that Tennessee and Pennsylvania. Y'all never heard of the Devil's River in Texas. But uh, if you yeah. make it down here, it's an amazing place. We have a couple of hosts that are in Texas, and uh, I have definitely heard that before. So um, it is a bucket list for sure. <laughs> for me, I, I'd love to do it, but I'm getting a little long in the tooth to uh, <laughs> sleep on the ground for that many days in a row. Y'all go get it done. You know, I'll see you at the Xville. That. <laughs> you pick us up. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh, Amber, how about you? What do you fish out of? So <laughs> I've had a variety of kayaks. Um, my husband currently is, I had an Outback for a while. Now he's we've, he's got a PA-14, um, which is, we call it the USS Rusty. I mean, it's <laughs> it's massive. Um, so I love my Outback. My Outback was my my baby. I love that one. Um, but I did I get in. Of, so. Yeah, I did get in his uh, PA-14-360, and I'm a believer of that one, too. Man, that reverse and the whole... I mean, that's amazing. Um, I'll take nice. it. So nice. what, yeah. kind of, what kind of waters are y'all fishing out there? Uh, like we where? are just lakes and ponds. Yeah, mostly lakes. But um, we try to, especially with, I mean, like Memorial Day weekend, you're going to want to get into the coves and the, mm -hmm. you don't want to be on the big water. You don't want to be out there with the skiers and the jet skis and all of that. So we tend to go to, even if we can get into some lake, small lakes that don't allow the motors, those are our best bets. That's um, where, that's where I'll be. Yeah. Me we want to be in the calm coves. Um, it, it, it's actually like a high of 61 on Saturday here in Tennessee. We're having like a code front come in this weekend. It, wow. it, yeah, it, I mean, I'm not really complaining cause it's been really hot here lately, but <laughs> it, I'm, I'm actually, uh, going to be, you know, by the time this airs, it's going to be over, but I'm hosting a tournament on a trail motor only lake on Saturday. Nice. But uh, it's probably going to be packed out there too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm getting it done early, you know, six to 12 and get out of there. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how the fish are going to react to that temperature drop. Yeah, that's Which always interesting. Um, well, I haven't been on, on the lake in a couple weeks. This past weekend, I went out on the Duck River and I was getting, I think like 78. Wow. Uh, okay. All yeah, right. And that, that's on, that's on the river. So if that's river is that really warm, warm for moving water. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't remember it warming up that fast last year but like i said it's, it's been it's been warm here uh this year and so the little bit of temperature drop yeah, i ain't complaining about it too much especially uh also got the kids got ball games this weekend mm. so uh you know being out there on that hot field mm -hmm. kind of, but yeah Cool. So, well, um, is there anything else you guys wanted to cover? Um, we, uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, the, the places people can find you, but is there any other, uh, other, uh, avenues for finding you or, I mean, I'm sure you guys, you definitely have Facebook cause I've seen posts on Facebook and when, when Ryan was asking about your stories, uh, the, the kind of stories that I think is a great avenue for that because you can go and read <clears throat> of people, uh, people's experiences, um, uh, on, on the Facebook page and they're amazing to, to read through. Um, some of the testimonies that are, are posted there are, are really uh, moving and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a great place to check that out. But are any other places you guys want to shout out or anything like that? Well, we, we uh, have Instagram, we have Twitter. Um, you'll find us in the normal social media avenues. Um, you too. YouTube. You YouTube yes, we do. Um, if you want to sign up for a newsletter, we send out newsletters and um, face. Yeah. Our website, you can scroll through all of the tabs on there and, and get more testimonials and information there. Cool. And any questions, like I said, hit contact us and we'll get back to you. We'd love to answer any any questions we have. If you want to start a chapter, if you want to volunteer, participate, donate, we're all we're all in. Right, and I I, I want to again just tell anyone who's even remotely interested, go try it. Whether you want to participate, like you said, if you're a veteran or first responder, and you're on the fence about trying it, I'm telling you, go out. You're, you're going to love it. It's going to be amazing. And the same for anybody on the fence about volunteering. If, uh, you know, it, it's a great feeling to, to see 
uh, someone go out uh, and come back uh, a different person, just even if for a little bit of time, you know, uh, to see that that reward in itself makes it amazing. But um, the camaraderie more than helps too. Um, just being able to be out there with um, like-minded people, a bunch of um, anglers who will talk your ear off about fishing. And, um, you know, I, it's just an all around great experience. So definitely if you're on the fence about it, I a hundred percent go try it. Absolutely. Cool guys. Well, go ahead. Uh, Ryan. I was just going to say, uh, I appreciate y'all coming on here and talking with us about this. Uh, it's something that, you know, we were really wanting to do for Memorial day is, you know, you know, get the word out about Heroes on the Water and what y'all do for veterans. And so we appreciate what y'all do, you know, for the people that serve to keep us free. Right. Yeah. Well, a big shout out to to the veterans since it is Memorial Day. Thank you all so much for your service. Um, you know, we can't say it enough, but uh, we're truly grateful for the, the sacrifices that you've laid out. And we want to help you guys as much as possible, uh, uh, you know, just have the best life you guys can because you, you totally deserve it so well this this sometimes is a solemn weekend for those that have lost buddies and uh we recognize that and uh i'll i promise if you're listening and you're having a hard time today hit that info at heroes on the water we'll, we'll be right there you know and we'll figure out a way to get your fish in um just if there's a, not a place in your area immediately if you've got transportation, you can figure out how to make a weekend event to drive to a neighboring location. We'd love to have you. We really would. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess um, we'll wrap it up for tonight. Thank you both again for coming on. Um, and uh, anytime you want to highlight anything, just give us a shout out and we'll, we'll have you guys back on because uh, we love having you guys. Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> Did y'all have any sponsors or anything you want to shout out? We usually, you know, let anglers shout out their sponsors. I'm not sure how that works with Heroes on the Water. I don't know if y'all got some sponsors that you like to give a shout out to that help take care of y'all. Or... Well, Academy's, Academy is one of our, our major sponsors. Um, right now, I believe if for veterans, they're giving 10% off on their website. So um, we really do appreciate Academy. Awesome. Yeah. Academy's a good place, man. They got tons of good stuff. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks again for coming on. Um, everybody, uh, we hope you guys have a happy Memorial Day, and um, we will catch you back next week. Um, this has been the Bass Fishing for Noob segment on the Paddle and Fit podcast, where we bring you the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. Thanks, guys, and have a good week. Later, Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com 